Turning now to COVID-19, two Cummins inmates have now died from coronavirus. Dr. Nate Smith with the health department tells us they both had underlying health conditions and were hospitalized for the virus before their deaths. They were both in maximum security with life sentences and in their 60s. There are 135 Cummins inmates and 13 staff who have COVID-19 right now. The governor also announcing today the PPE decontaminator will soon be in commission. The personal protective equipment decontaminator is located at Goodwill. It will use peroxide to clean masks and hospitals and clinics will bag their used PPE and drop them off or ship them to be cleaned. The machine can clean 80,000 masks in a day and the goal is to have a one to three day turnaround. Personal care services like hair salons and tattoo shops can reopen next Wednesday and now another service will be added to that list. Beauty and barber schools can now open as well. Dr. Nate Smith said as long as they follow social distancing guidelines, they are able to reopen May 6th. And the governor will announce more reopenings next week. On Monday, we will know when large venues and houses of worship can reopen. The governor added he and the Department of Health have prepared guidelines for optometrists and they will make an announcement for their reopening sometime next week. All right, now as you can see, the numbers of new cases have been declining in the past several days, but the governor says while that's good to see, we still need to be aware that those numbers could spike at any time. So here are today's numbers. There are more than 3000 cases in Arkansas. Only 1300 of those are active. 100 people are currently being hospitalized and 20 of those are on a ventilator. We are now up to 73 total deaths. The good news, though, almost 2000 people have fully recovered from the virus. Today, UAMS in the city of Little Rock and the Consulate of Mexico in Little Rock came together to host a COVID-19 mobile testing site at the Southwest Community Center. THV 11's Mercedes McKay shows us why it was a team effort. Hayden, I got here around 930, which is 30 minutes before the drive through testing officially started, and there were already about 20 cars lined up ready to get tested. We love to see a long line of cards when we start. The worst thing to have is nobody here. Car after car rolled up on Saturday to the Southwest Community Center in Little Rock for the free COVID-19 drive through evaluation. We do recognize that there are areas of the city where people might not be able to as easily come downtown to our central site. And so we wanted to be here right in the community as well. UAMS healthcare professionals have been all across the state with their mobile testing sites, but this is the first one outside of the main campus in the capital city. This is another way to assist the most vulnerable people. Rodolfo Quilantan says two weeks ago, UAMS proposed this drive through to the Consulate of Mexico, so they partner with the city of Little Rock to have it here off Baseline Road. He says the location, paired with the team efforts, more people in this community would have confidence to go and get tested. We know that many of them are scared. Many of them don't want to come to take these kind of medical examinations. Three hours into the four hour screening, over 100 patients had already been through the triage unit. Dr. Jennifer Hunt says the number of screenings at each mobile site has ranged greatly, depending on the size of the community. We've been in really small towns where we've screened 70 people, and we've been in towns where we've screened almost 200. No matter the number, Quilantan says Saturday's evaluations prove we are better together. I think this is another way to show and to, to put in evidence that if we work together, we can attain everything. Dr. Hunt told me there's no set schedule for these mobile drive through testings. They just go where there's a hot spot or if a community calls. In Little Rock, Mercedes McKay, THV 11 News. And a reminder, online and phone screenings are available at UAMSHealth.com and the UAMS Health Hotline at 800-632-4502. Warm temperatures across much of the nation increase the urge of millions of Americans to get out of the house. But in New York State, the governor says the latest coronavirus numbers warrant continued caution. CBS News correspondent Michael George has more from New York. Beaches in California's Orange County were empty Saturday, a stark contrast to last weekend's flood of people that prompted the governor to shut them down. As dozens of states across the country began to gradually reopen businesses, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis stopped by this hair salon in Orlando. If you have something like, like these personal services, 
What's the risk level? And is there a way we can lower the risk level? Warm spring weather drew countless New Yorkers to the city's parks, where face masks were handed out. Governor Cuomo says the virus killed 299 people in the state on Friday, the first uptick in weeks. We're still getting about 900 new infections every day walking into the hospital. We're trying to understand exactly why that is. And in Washington, D.C., a skirmish intensified over whether Dr. Anthony Fauci will testify before a committee in the Democrat-led House. This notion that the White House is blocking uh, Dr. Fauci just doesn't bear in truth. The House Appropriations Committee released a statement saying, quote, the COVID-19 pandemic should not and cannot become a partisan issue. There are too many lives at risk. And Navy and Air Force Blue Angels and Thunderbirds soared over the White House, as well as Baltimore and Atlanta, showing thanks to medical and other essential workers on the front lines. Michael George, CBS News.